Building a successful business can take years of hard work. At West Tennessee Bank, we have the financial products and services your business needs. No business is too large or too small to benefit from our experience. West Tennessee Bank, a division of Decatur County Bank. We think you'll like us. Equal Housing Lender Member FDIC.
that's what I said. You know, just just got to do what you you have to do. Uh, it's something that you guys approve. Well, well, we do have an interest. I'd say want to research it and see. I don't it. know. I don't know if they would, if if it would be possible or not. Do you know the DM at Three Harmon's got that indoor track? That might be, mm. that might let you use that side. Do they have a track at Free Hartman around any no. outside track? I don't think they do. But now that one, that one in the gym, though, it's that cushion. Yes, sir. Whatever. I mean, it's a nice track. Mm -hmm. well, what all are you thinking about? Just just running or pole vaulting or I don't know much about track. That's what I've seen on TV. Well, I've talked to uh, the one I mentioned here, Trent McManus, who's already on staff at the high school as a teacher, he ran track in high school. I don't think he ran in college, but he ran in high school and competed. But he had, he had said something about some equipment. We didn't get into how much equipment costs, but he had mentioned about pole volume and stuff like that. You know, you jump to uh, hurdles would be an event. Shot put usually is a pretty good event. Uh, and it's not a lot of expense because uniforms are minimal, you know, cost of that. And, uh, you know, the big thing is just trying to, to practice like you're going to play. You know, that's going to be the difficult to find a place to, you know, play. I wonder about this good one probably. What about the walking track? Pippin Sport, Sorry. Pippin Sport Plex, you know, that's, that's what I was, what about that one? The walking track at the that's sports place. It's lighted too, they can do yes. that at night. <clears throat> Practice. I mean, I'd say look into it and see what we can. So it's been back five years, I couldn't remember when it was. I'd like to go back and look at the budget and see what yeah, we allowed. I'm not sure, see, I've been there, for, this is my fourth year. Oh, it's been longer than five years then. Yeah, oh, yes. yes, it's been closer to 10 then. Well, they had a cross country team here. Yeah. We still do. We still have cross country. I don't, I don't remember that. Oh, they had it when I did. Did they have it when you was a freshman? Yes. We had just a few years of it. Just a few. We had one coach who was who was able to. We had a family move in, and he, the boy that moved in from out of state, was a state champion pole vaulter. So we built a team around him so he could compete as a team. You know, it helps your spring sports to participate in small sports too. You know, so oftentimes football players may throw the shot put or you know your girls basketball team boys basketball team you know there, there'll be some conflicts in with some of those spring sports because it's a spring sport but you know your cross-country kids who run you know they'll be able to do something in the in the spring as well <coughs> and so it gives them more opportunity like this one so. well if they during like uh softball <coughs> at that point yes sir that's part of that spring fling, baseball, softball, track. Mm -hmm. What is, is there any other sports that compete during that? Uh, during the spring I think it's Tennis. Tennis. Mm -hmm. Tennis. Mm -hmm. well, I don't have no problem with just it. Just look into just it and see what, what see what we can do, do can do. come up with. If we could find a facility for the practice. I'm not going to 
motion that we proceed looking into it and see what we need to do. And I said, see if we can get a crack team going. All right, we have a motion to second that we go ahead and start trying to see what would be involved in getting a track team. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. I'm that, that would be a good idea out there at the soccer field that, to be looking at that because it does have some room around it, doesn't it? Oh, no, I hadn't, I hadn't laid it out, so I'm... I'm yes, the law. Well, well, yeah, we don't necessarily own the property on the... What's that, on the east side? It's, 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 it's county price yeah. property. It used to be, it used to be ours, because that's where the ag is, right? Pig yeah. barns used to be. <clears throat> See, you, you want to also make like the Liberty, when that school was built, we had a track around the field, but it's not official size, so you can't even have a meet there. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of money went into that track and it's even practice on practice. That's about it. Well, we have a motion second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Then we'll be looking to get a track team. Thank you, Ms. Thank Will. you so much. <clears throat> all right, the next thing on our agenda is going to be some celebrations. And I think Dr. Kapp is going to be making a presentation here. I promise you. Uh, this is actually is uh, Coach Shawns and Miss Williams, uh, Carolyn Williams, had planned on coming and speaking to the the group and the board uh, tonight. And we have a football game that got moved. Some Coach Shawns is there, and then Miss uh, Williams is at the pageant. But what we're going to talk about is uh, ACT data from uh, this past year's graduating class. We're excited to announce that uh, our uh, Chester County's data versus the state. You'll see uh, our composite is 20.6, uh, which is above the composite for the state of Tennessee. Uh, in English, the state is 19.6, and ours is 21.4. Math is 19.4, and ours is 19.1. Reading 20.5 uh, in the state, and 20.8 uh, for Chester County. And, and science is 20.3 and ours is 20.6. So uh, our teachers should be here, not me, uh, because they are the ones that need to be celebrating. And um, I'll tell you, uh, we've got some highlights uh, that, that he put together. Uh, overall, it's, it, we're in the top 25% of schools in the state of Tennessee, which is um, a great honor. We're not satisfied with that. You know, there's some schools that uh, Mr. Kilzer and, and uh, and I and, the, and our, our leadership team has, has looked at Germantown being one of those schools that's 25. Uh, so we're trying to see what they're doing to, to surpass them uh, in the state of Tennessee and be number one. So uh, our teachers are working hard for that. Our economic disadvantage is 19.3, uh, 11th in the state. Uh, average English is 21.4, ranks 10th in the state. Uh, 20, uh, the, above the 21, 51%. And that ranks 22nd in the state. First perfect score of a 36, um, Colton Cronin. And to tell you the great thing about that kid is he made like a uh, 34, then a 35, then a 36. He kept trying because he was getting encouragement, not only from within himself and his parents, but uh, our teachers were trying to constantly encourage him and say, You can do this, you can do this. So he got that perfect score of 36. Um, then also, first time above the state average uh, in, in many years. So uh, we're talking about that. Here's some areas that we need to improve in. Uh, our math scores across the board is not where it needs to be. Uh, again, our, our teachers are working hard, uh, but we've met, and, and, and next year, uh, we're gonna focus on algebra one, algebra two, and, and geometry to our entire math department. We're gonna make uh, a laser focus on them to get them up. Uh, to where they have to be. Our African American population, uh, you know, we're working hard to do that too. Um, and then the 21 by 2020 that our governor has kind of encouraged, mandated, uh, you know, we're right there on the cusp of that. And uh, this now is without the scores coming back for our retake. So our seniors that uh, have taken the test, uh, they got the opportunity to do a retake uh, a few weeks ago. And, uh, you know, so they take the best score from that. So that 20.6 could possibly move up. You know, it won't move down. Um, but we're shooting that, that 22 is the mark for college and career readiness. Uh, 21 is by 2021, but we're not shooting for 2021. We're doing uh, the college.
college career readiness of 22. So, like I said, we're tickled to death uh, where we're at, but we're not satisfied with, with that, and we're working hard each and every day. And um, our t Next year, our schedule, we're building that now, and we're going to present that to Mr. Kilzer and his staff on, on uh, what it looks like for us next year. But we have a plan to where every kid uh, is getting 22% more seat time in algebra class, out of one out of two. Uh, we have a plan to where every child that is a sophomore and a junior has ACT prep with a, a, a teacher in that subject area. So it's not like a, um, me, somebody that's just teaching a kid algebra uh, or ACT prep class. So it's a, an English teacher teaching English skills <coughs> to students to increase their ACT score. Because the young lady sitting in the room back in the back, if they make a 21 or above on their ACT, that's money for their family. Um, so uh, we're, we're uh, all over the ACT. And, and trying to not only you know do a good job in the state's eyes, but more than that, do a good job for our families uh, in our community, so their their parents don't have to pay uh, as much uh, tuition at, at the colleges and universities that, that they have. So um, again, I wish Coach Showers could be here. They do a much better job than, than I would because they're the ones in the trenches doing it every day. And like Coach and I said, it's, it's not about ACT prep. It's a total. It's a total mind shift on what's expected and what's required of our kids. Uh, and ACT is something we talk about. You know, we uh, talk about it every day. So our students, uh, you know, it's 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 driving us. You know? So our end course is important, but it's not tied to money. You know, so this ACT is something that can change their family's future. Uh, so thank you for letting me come and, and talk to you. Um, I encourage the people in the in the room to come up and see our school and visit and see what's going on over there because we got across the district, but I'm talking from the high school, we got some great things going on. Questions? About anything? Is Germantown, are they cooperating really good with you about they are. It, you know, some information? Way, we've had three schools approach uh, me about coming to visit our school and talk to some of our teachers. Um, we have some teachers at our school that are tops in the state in, in their area content area so uh, there's several schools that, that already have uh, sent a, a, their staffs over to meet with our teachers and sit in the class meet with them during their planning time we sent a group over to Lexington yesterday um, or Wednesday yeah, yesterday uh, to uh, meet with uh, their math department because their math department scores were higher than ours uh, just a few percentage points but we want to see what what are you doing and what schedule are you on what teachers what what's the standards that you teach how are you teaching uh, your math classes and how are you assessing those math students so um, it's important to us to connect and, and it's unbelievable how open and helpful everybody is because you know we're all in this thing to, uh, to have a positive impact on student achievement so uh, to answer your question yes I've not coach has reached out to Germantown and been through some trainings with them at different in services and league conference I think they were up there probably presenting um, and what I can say to you we test 100% of our kids. Yeah. So we don't try to do -si do and, and uh, suspend 20 kids so they're not tested on the day of an, an, in the course or an ACT. Uh, we go get them, we call them, we have a retake. So it's, it's, it's a true measure of our kids' ability on that day, yeah. you see. Now there's a lot of factors that go into that, you know I mean? If a kid's got the flu on the day, he, may or he, or he or she may not, or they lose a lot of have a death in the family I and mean, you know things like that happen but um, as far as them getting the content from teachers that are delivering the message it's happening at Chester County High School with the teachers and, and it started with you know it's, it's the teachers that have been there doing it for years and years and years so um, doing a great job. Anything
we also have areas to celebrate. Uh, the work of the LPLA teachers is phenomenal. They know how to ask the questions, to spur that type of engagement for the students to really participate, to learn, to demonstrate that learning that matches up very well with the ACT. Saying that, this past week we were uh, we're receiving more state data. Last month we talked about, or I shared with you, where our growth was. That was where we were projected to be and where we actually were. And our growth numbers last last month, as we shared, the high school had scored an overall composite of a level five. The middle school had scored an overall of a level five. So we we're proud of that work. Now that our achievement data has been provided, the full accountability has been determined. The accountability measures achievement as well as growth. And we celebrate with Chester County High School because they have achieved the status that we had back in 2008, uh, being a reward school. Now, to, as your board packets reflect, and I'm making this mention for Mary, so we can have a front fold in the independent. <laughs> to be a reward school, you have to be the top 5% in the state. So, again, that status is exceptional. Not only for the high school for reward as progress, that means for growth, the uh, Jacks Creek had for achievement, which there was two separate measures, but it represents the same thing. Achieve or reward status means the top 5% in the state for that. So both of those schools were very proud of that accomplishment. <clears throat> our district overall, we have school level accountability and district wide accountability. And as you see there, our district accountability is achieving. I can tell you that we met with the Southwest Corps Director yesterday where we revisited these numbers and this accountability and she was very complimentary of the work that our teachers are doing, our staff and students are doing. Uh, I don't know the others to compare it to because we don't have all the data to see in public for everybody, but we will be looking further into that data to see how other districts compare to us overall. But she was very complimentary which led me to believe that we're not the only one, uh, or we're one of the fewer ones who had achieving overall. I know that others had exemplary, but it was very few. Exemplary was the top mark. Uh, achieving was the next highest mark. And uh, there's four marks for overall district um, accountability. So again, we're very proud of the, the work that the high school is doing, the work that the Jacks Creek Elementary School has done. and. Uh, you know, finally, as I said uh, in your board packet, we're about wrapping up this month, but this month, all month long, has been Principals Month. It's a month that nationwide they celebrate. For the last several years, the Governor Haslam has declared Tennessee to honor principals on the month of October. I have two um, uh, uh, um, documents in my office where he signed off on that at the state level. Uh, Steve McDaniel, promised that I would have the other ones I could share, but I hadn't seen it yet, so I'm guessing he sent it to the post office box. <laughs> I know it, I know it, I know it. So again, Keep on. Keep on. it is. No, no, no. That's, he knows. <laughs> but I, I do know, and I'm not just saying it because I served in that role for so many years, but the principal has a very key role in ensuring that everybody stays course with the vision of the school, as Dr. Catlett had mentioned, something that we were notified of yesterday when we met with our Southwest Corps Director. Not every district tested all 100% of the kids. No, I was looking at But all means all. That's the way it's supposed to be. For anybody that brings, that brings their child to Chester County Schools, we expect to teach them. Now that teaching may vary. The level of their proficiency will vary based on the child's ability. But as you see in several of the, of the schools within the district, we understand that we gotta develop grit, and that comes through productive struggle and practice, and ensuring those students have the opportunity to get engaged in the learning and to get the proper feedback and the coaching from their teachers to ensure that they can demonstrate that learning when it comes to test time. So very, very pleased with all the work, and especially with the leadership of our principals, it makes my job easier when they do theirs well. Right, you, Doc. Right. I would like to say, too, we do appreciate all of our principals and thank you for being here tonight, Dr. Kevin. Now, last Friday, I got him 
uh, donuts. So I had, I had three. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you said that in front of me. <laughs> 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 you know what he did though, he brought them and hit them. So I looked around and I saw him trying to follow me. I don't know if you remember across the hallway. Hit him, bro. We were trying to take care of you. Oh, yeah. All right. Sure. <laughs> All right, the next thing on our agenda is going to be a policy revision, and I believe that uh, was our community use of food facilities. And let's see. Shane, you and Leon, I believe that looked at that, is that correct? And recommend that we make the change. Probably we make the change from where they get approval of the facilities from the principal to the superintendent's office. That way it can be uh, police better for people that are using it unauthorized, like on Saturdays for yard sales, things of that nature. Everything has to be approved. Through. Yeah, what yard sales? I probably know. Yeah, but <clears throat> sometimes they still pop up. Yeah. But uh, anyway, basically the overall adjustment is principal uh, is not required to approve that the superintendent is prior to use, and that comes from the committee, so that requires that. Okay. All in favor of making the improvement? To approve that change. <laughs> All in favor of approving the change in the policy, say aye. Opposed, no. Right, thank you, and that is approved. Right, the next thing, at the last meeting, we talked about an incentive plan for our school staff to hopefully get their attendance. Yes, sir. Speak to that, please. Um, following what um, Ms. Griffin. Heather Griffin had spoken to us last week or last month about the uh, you know, faculty health and wellness. One of the components of that is to ensure that not only do we promote uh, healthy practices and healthy diet and exercise, but for the benefit of making sure that our. I had that on the side. It was. <laughs> <laughs> But to make sure, the reason being that we want to make sure that they're there at work. Um, we had learned from the preceding month um, that, as, as you see there, what we have cost us in that second bulleted area where during the last calendar year, this is calendar year, only certified staff has been this count. They missed a combined total of 2,564 days. And that was a cost to the district of $113,000 for paying substitute fees. So what we have done as at following the board's recommendation is develop this pilot program. And you see the bulleted points at the bottom of that page that would be from January to May. It would be a monthly comparison where each month and this is going to be starting with for the pilot looking at the school site employees talking about the certified your teachers your administrators but also the support staff be your parapros custodians uh, cafeteria staff all of those staff who work at the school sites when i'm talking about the central office staff or the maintenance we're talking about those who have the most direct impact with the kids because again if they're there then our kids are in the best capable position of learning the most they can for that day so each month we will budget $1,000 and then each month after we identify those who have had no days, personal days or sick days for that month, we will have a drawing and three names will be chosen off the certified list uh, for and receive an award of 2000, or 200 each and then two names for the uh, class, or classified staff will be drawn for the same dollar amount for $200 each. And then as it says on the back side of this, this is going to be as it describes itself as a pilot. We're just testing to see if this does a, have a positive effect on staff attendance. We hope it does. Other districts, Anderson District, Anderson County District is the one that I have still some documentation on my desk. They did, the, they did this program not exactly the same, but they did a program similar to it last year uh, to help mitigate that the excessive cost of paying for subs. Substitute in many cases are not bad people, but they're not certified and trained to offer the direct instruction of these students. They're there to manage and then to 
support the teachers with whatever lesson plan they have. And our parapros this year are receiving more intensive training. And in some cases, and I'm proud to hear, that as people outside of our school district come into those settings where a parapro is working with the teacher, they can't distinguish the teacher from the parapro. So that means that every adult is learning together, they're working together in collaboration, and it's not just the one adult certified teacher who feels like that they bear all the responsibility. Every adult that works with kids are really taking an active role in doing so. So that's why we're including them in the same mix. The reason for one less than the certified is because we have less of them. But we're ready to do this next, uh, as it says there, with the timeline for January through May. And I recommend that the board uh, let us take that action and we will compare it, as it says on the back side, looking at the months and see what type of gain we have with overall attendance. We will start announcing it and depending on the action of the board. motion say to approve the pilot program to start January through May. And any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. It is approved. <coughs> the only other thing we did have in our bank was a few updates. Did anybody have anything they wanted to bring up? Any discussion? If I may, I may speak. Uh, I talked to Jeff Vaughn today. Jeff Vaughn said uh, that uh, every construction group that had submitted a bid prior has, based on his conversation, we're going to we're going to follow through and submit another bid. So we're very pleased with that result because those are the ones who have already demonstrated an interest. And that's November seventh. November seventh, ten o'clock here is when the bid opening will be. Yes. Sir. 10 o'clock. <clears throat> anything else? What in our next schedule meeting? What are we going to discuss? If we do something to take care of and make for Christmas. Well, I didn't include that, but we can discuss it now. If we yeah. want to have what? You know, I yeah. saw something the other day somebody recommended to me. Right. It's the chamber dollars. Are you familiar with the price? Yes. And that way they can spend it in any store that accepts them, which is grocery stores. It, it counts as a salary. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it I mean, have to be you know, and that way it wouldn't be such. You know, you got to go get a turkey or you got to get a ham. Right. So let me ask you this question: Are you hearing that, Stacy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let me ask you a question. I mean, I yeah. just are we? Emily asked me about it. Yeah, and I, and I understand that, and I feel like it's a good plan. Here's the thing that we got to decide as a board. Are, are you wanting to offer a $25 chamber buck, which will cost more? You know, because you got to deal. It's It would be considered as salary as part of their wages. So what would that be? A couple of dollars more? Yeah, for everybody, but then yeah. they're going to pay taxes on it, too, because it's going to go on their debt. That's the reason why we got away from it. Yes, but but now we can do it. I mean, you know, because I, I had it's a lot of. It's an IRS regulation. It's not yeah. something that we yeah. require. It, it, it's considered compensation under IRS regulations, so we have to include it as fringe benefit on their debt. Well, and, and, and we have to actually go in and touch every every employee's account because we have to manually add that. It's not something for the payroll process. <coughs> so it's easier to give cash. No. no. Easier to get a turkey. Sir, <laughs> easier to get a turkey ham or country ham. Yeah, that's what Which I mean. we're giving a, a, a $25 gift or 10 or something. But we realize that that was done still. On the same time. Yes. Yes. Right. I mean, Emily had just asked me if I'd bring that up, and I said, yeah, no problem. And, and I mean, what, as far as my department goes, you know, whatever y'all want to do, I mean, we can make yes, work. it takes more. Um, time from from our department to do that, which we can do. It's not a problem. But there, are, it is it is going to cost more, and it is. I, I know it's not going to make a big impact on somebody's W two form, but it will be on there. It will be included. It would be easier on the inventory of what they choose. Yeah, because we're giving all oh, the I same mean, thing. Yeah. yeah. So it won't be. I have to have 
X number of turkeys and X number of hams and picking those up. So what with the management of But some of them never did pick them up. Yeah, yeah you're right. Because well, we have it was we have announced it several times to, to go go by. You're right. I mean that gives them more options because that any of the businesses in Cheshire County that pay them. Yeah. yeah, I find value in it because it 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 encourages people to shop local. Yeah. yeah. And they give them in five dollar increments. <clears throat> Whatever, anything, anything they that they shot for any, of the, any of the businesses that are participating in there. Liquor store? You know, I don't think they're out there. Get your toenails straight. So it has to be somebody that is participating. Yes, it would be a chamber member, I'm sure. Yeah. There's several businesses that are in it. Oh yeah. But yeah, yeah Miller's is in it. I'm sure Piggly Wiggly is in it. Mm -hmm. So you're probably your major grocery stores in Henderson are all in it, but like Southern Chick is and there's others. Uh, yeah, that's several. That's you know, several. Like this team said, though, I mean if you go up and give somebody a twenty dollar bill, they're gonna appreciate that. So if it's twenty five, five dollars for the payroll taxes or whatever that she has to hold out, it's still maybe better for them to go down and get a target. You know, I mean, they're making money off the turkey, and you're, you know, so it's just whatever. It's the easiest. But twenty dollar bill is, is is a nice. You know, and the nice chamber thing. makes nothing off of this. It's just the right. yeah. pass through, so they can get people shot in Chester County. Right. Well, these they got to buy them and here in Henderson anyway. What we've been giving them. Oh, yeah. 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 They yeah. have to pick them up. But they have to pick out. It's only three things they can get. And a lot of people don't know how to cook. Sorry, that's sure. <laughs> I don't know why to cook a turkey either. Yeah. Well, Stacy, were you saying that we could possibly, like, we would be, if we were actually give them twenty-five dollars, we'd be paying a couple of dollars out of our pocket? Yes, it's their payroll tax expense and our payroll tax expense. Absolutely. You're still paying Social Security, Medicare, uh, both sides.